What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is show you a easy, a medium, as well as a hard example of applying the elimination method for solving a systems of equations. I recognize that not always a easy problem is something easy to everybody or hard one is the same, but I just decided I wanted to pick three problems that would give you a little bit of a variety for understanding and applying the elimination method. So let's go ahead and get right started into it. I'm gonna to try to, as I you know, explain the process of elimination, um, to give you kind of some tips and tricks along the way, as well as show you some common mistakes that I see students make um, with using the systems of equations elimination method um, inside the classroom, all right? So, all right, so the elimination method, sometimes called the subtraction method or the addition method, is basically just a way for us to combine our two equations to eliminate a variable. And the way that we wanna do, what we wanna look forward is trying to get a zero as a coefficient for our variable. That is how we're going to eliminate it. Technically, we're not like getting rid of it. It's just gonna have a zero in front. Um, so therefore it's not gonna, so therefore we can focus in on solving for the other variable. So you can see in this case, I have a two X and a three X, all right? Now I always like to think about this as the addition method, just adding, right? If you can focus on adding, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. Um, I will show you how to subtract though as well. But let's just pretend we had to add these two equations up, okay? So if I was gonna go ahead and add, what I want you to see is two X plus three X is a five X. So that's not eliminating anything, right? But in this case, what I want you to recognize here is, is a, hey, I have one positive one and a negative one. Well, what's a positive one and a negative one? That is equal to a zero, why, right? Well, zero times anything is what? Zero. So that is now how we eliminate our variable y. And eight plus um, two is going to equal a 10. So now I have an equation of five x is equal to 10. Okay, well now I have a one-step equation, right? So you can see by adding the equations, by eliminating the variable, right? Now I just have a one-step equation that I can easily solve, right? I can divide by five on both sides. No, x is equal to two. All right, now it's important with the elimination method to remember, we're not just solving for a variable X like we did when like solving linear equations. We have to solve for X and Y, right? We eliminated the Y just so we could solve for X, but we still got to solve for Y. So what we need to do now is take this value of two and plug it in for X in one of our equations. Now, one of the common mistakes or common questions students ask is like, well, which, you know, which one do we do? It doesn't really matter. Um, I prefer to like stay away from negatives. So therefore that's why I'm gonna choose the top equation. So if I have a two X plus Y is equal to eight, I, we says X is equal to two. So I can now replace a X with a two plus Y is equal to eight, two plus two or two times two, I'm sorry, is gonna be a four, right? And then we can subtract a four on both sides. So Y is now gonna equal to a four. Okay, so we have a two comma four, that is now going to be our solution. And that was fairly easy. Whenever, what I want you to always look at is whenever you have a system of equations where the coefficients are the same, maybe they're both two or they're both um, one in this case. If what you wanna do is get them to be a positive as well as a negative, so therefore you can add them up, all right? Um, and that is gonna be usually gonna be the simplest is you wanna get the coefficients of one variable, doesn't matter if it's X or Y, but you wanna get the coefficients of one of those variables to be exactly the same. Preferably a positive and a negative so you can add them. But in this next example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one where they're not gonna be positive and negative. And so therefore we can do the subtraction method. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna lie. Um, you could do it that way, but I'm actually gonna show you not to do it that way because I just don't like doing subtraction. I, I think it just makes too many mistakes for students. So what I'm gonna do is say, you know what? Let's not do it that way. Let's always try to get it the same coefficient, one positive, one negative. Um, because it's a little tweak, guys. That's all it is. It's a little tweak. But if you can just focus on always trying to add your two equations up, uh, I think it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So in this next example, I have a two and a four and a negative three and two. They're not the same like they were up here, okay? So if I add these two equations up, if you simply just say, well, Mr. McLogan said to add them up, what you're gonna get? You're gonna get eight X, minus y equals nine. That's not helping you out, right? We need to eliminate a variable. So what we need to do is say, all right, they do not have the same coefficients, but what could I do to one or both equations to get them to have the same coefficient? And hopefully you recognize like three and two don't have like, you know, it's not hard, but you'd have to multiply both of them to get a common denominator. In the new, uh, in, for the x's though, you say all I need to do to go from a two to a four is multiply my bottom equation by two. Now, two times two would give me four. But again, remember what I said. I don't want them to be the same. I want one to be positive, one to be negative. So the quick little trick I need to do, guys, is just make this a negative, okay? So now what you need to do is you need to multiply everything in this equation by this negative two. 
So therefore, it's going to give me negative 4x, positive 6y. I don't know why I'm writing like that. So it'd be a positive 6y, and then negative 2 times negative 7 is going to equal a negative 14. Now, my denominator, I'm just going to keep that as, um, as a darker blue just to let you know that I did not change it. Um, that, is going, that equation was preserved. Okay. All right. So now, what are we going to do? We now have them exactly the same, one's positive, one's negative. So now, add the equations up. So negative 4x plus 4x is a 0x. Um, 6, uh, let's just do it in red. 6y plus 2y is going to be an 8y. And, right, and then negative um, 14 plus 2 is going to equal a negative 12. Okay, now we can divide by 8, divide by 8. And you can say y is going to equal to, and you might, hmm, well, this is kind of weird. Um, and you could divide a 4, right, and that'd be a 3 halves. So it'd be a negative 3 halves. Okay, <laughs> so now we have a fraction. It is a little tricky, I told you. Um, so now we have a fraction. Now, again, remember, you could plug this negative 3 halves into either one of these two equations, right? Either one. Like when you, when you had x, you could plug it into top or bottom. In this one, you could do the exact same thing. But my y is equal to a negative 3 halves. I do not want to plug a y into this original equation because if I plugged it in there, then I'm still going to have a fraction. What you preferably want to do is plug in your y into into the y variable that's going to eliminate. And if you see, it's going to be exactly right here because two times a, um, if you plug it in over here, the twos are going to divide out. So you're going to want to plug it into the bottom equation in this example. So again, let me show you what I mean by that. So it's 4x plus 2y is equal to two. We know y is equal to negative four, um, three halves, right? So 4x plus two times, actually, I won't do that in red, times a negative three halves, and then is equal to two. So what I want you to see here now is the twos divide out, right? This one's in the numerator, that one's in the denominator. So they're going to divide out. Now it's going to leave me with a 4x minus 3, or I'm sorry, plus a negative 3. Let's just write it like that. You could say plus a negative 3 is the same thing as minus a 3. Um, actually, you know, yeah, let's just write it like that. 4x minus 3 equals 2. Hopefully you can make that jump with me. And now you recognize it's a two-step equation, but something that's very easy for you to be able to add. I'm doing the work in my head. Sorry about that. Add a 3. 4x is going to equal a 5. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's going to be a 5. And then divide by 4, divide by 4. And then you can say x is equal to a 5 fourths. So now my solution in this case is going to be 5 fourths for x and negative 3 halves. Okay. That's going to be my solution um, for that example. So now let's go and do one more example. Now in this next example, what I want to focus on is some fractions. Okay. Now in the last example, if you remember, what we did is we focused on some problems that had fractions in the, uh, I'm sorry, we had coefficient. We need to multiply one by a scalar. But what about if we have a problem like that looks like this? What about if we have one where we need to multiply both equations over here? So in this case, I have a one half X plus a two thirds Y equals a five over six. And that then the other equation is going to be a five twelfths X plus a seven twelfths Y equals three fourths. <sighs> okay. So most students will look at this problem and be like, yep, not doing this problem. <laughs> like I get the easy and the medium, but like this one is just too much. So what I would challenge to you to say is like main thing is fractions. A lot of students don't like fractions. I get it. So guess what? The first step I want you to do is just get rid of fractions, right? Whenever you're dealing with linear equations or whatever else, like if you have an opportunity to get rid of fractions, get rid of fractions. How do you get rid of fractions? You multiply it by something that every single denominator evenly divides into. So ask yourself, what is the smallest number that two, three, and six divides into? And you can say, well, that number, Ms. McGlogan, is six. Fine. Multiply six times everything on the top. I'm kind of weird doing it this way. So multiply six times everything up top. All right. And they say, what about the bottom? I have a 12 here. Ugh, I don't want a 12. Fine. What is the smallest number that 12, 12, and 4 divide into? And you say, well, 12 again. Okay, then minus a 12 on everything. Okay, now I know it's a little bit more work, but um, I'm going to talk my way through it because I don't want to write my way through it because I don't want to make the video longer than it already has to be. Um, but hopefully you, you can follow me here. If I do 6 times 1 half, 2 divides into 6 3 times. Therefore, that's going to leave me with a 3x. 6 times 2 thirds, so 6, 3 um, Three divides into six two times. Two times two is going to leave me with a four. So what I'm doing is like this, um, just so you can see. So two thirds times six, right, is equal to, um, you could say, 
you can divide those out. I'm sorry, two, right? So it's three, um, you're dividing a three in the top and bottom. You're reducing it to so dividing a three in the top and bottom. That's how that works. And that's how I get to four. And then six divided by six one time. So it's like going to leave me with a five. And then over here, I'm going to multiply the 12. That's going to leave me with a 5x. 12 divides with the 12, so that's going to leave me with a 7y. And then 4 divides into 12 three times. Um, so 3 times 3 is equal to 9. Okay, so now we have a more simplified equation. But guess what, guys? <laughs> we just got rid of the fractions. We didn't even get it close to like what we need to. So now we need to get a common denominator. We got to determine what do I want to eliminate. Do I want to eliminate the x's? Do I want to eliminate the y's? Do I want to get the x's to have the same coefficient or do I want the y's to have the same coefficient? And typically what I like to typically what I do is like just figure out which one's going to have the smallest LCD or the I'm sorry, least common multiple LCM. And what I recognize is the least common multiple of 3 and 15 is going to be uh, 3 and 5 is 15. The least common multiple of 4 and 7 um which would be 28. So therefore I'm going to find, I'm going to get these to be the same, the X's. And so to do that, I'm going to multiply by five. Over here, I'm going to multiply by three. But again, I don't want them to both be 15. I want one to be positive, one to be negative. So let's make this one. Let's make the bottom negative. doesn't really matter, guys. So now I'm going to multiply again and multiply again. So I'm doing this again. See what we get here. Thankfully, there's no fractions. So I get a 15X plus a 20Y is equal to a 25. Here I get a negative 15x minus a 21y and then minus uh what negative 27? Yes, okay. Um so now I can add these two up, right? And by adding them up, I'm gonna get a 0x. This is gonna be a negative y is equal to a negative two. So now divide by negative one, divide by negative one, y is equal to a two. Okay, now here's a cool thing. I can plug a two in for the y up here if I wanted to, right? But again, I, I'm gonna have more fractions. Like who wants to do that? So what you could also do is just plug the two into one of these equations. It's gonna make your life a lot easier, right? So if, let's just pick it into this top equation over here. It doesn't really matter. So three x plus four y, uh, I guess I give myself more room. So three x plus four y equals five. What I'm gonna do is just plug the two in for that. So four times two equals five. Four times two is eight, so I have a three x plus eight equals five, and now minus eight minus eight, three x equals negative three. Divide by three, divide by three, x is equal to a negative one, and there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. Um, if you want more examples on elimination, then check out the examples I have for you down below. But if this video gave you value, then hopefully you'll find some value in the next video I have for you here. Cheers.